Introducing the 1972 movie Shaft's Big Score. Starring Richard Roundtree as a tough private detective named Shaft. He tackles crime in New York City streets, keeping audiences glued to their seats with action and suspense. Stay tuned for some surprising, amusing, and even touching facts about this film. Which classic Hollywood actor did you enjoy most in this movie? Or do you have a favorite character? Share your memories or experiences related to this film in the comments below. We're excited to hear your stories. Keep watching for more fascinating insights into the movie. Shaft's Big Score from 1972 made a significant impression and has left a lasting memory in the world of cinema. It's a classic film that remains important even today. The movie broke new ground with its portrayal of a black private detective as the main character. This was groundbreaking for its time as it challenged stereotypes and showcased a strong independent black protagonist. The movie also had a profound cultural effect, inspiring a whole genre of black exploitation films. The character of Shaft, played by Richard Roundtree, became a well-known figure in pop culture. He was a tough, no-nonsense detective who wasn't afraid to take on the bad guys. His style, attitude, and confidence made him a hero to many and helped to redefine the action genre. The movie paved the way for future action stars and films featuring diverse main characters. Beyond its cultural significance, the movie also had a significant influence on filmmaking techniques. Its stylish direction, gritty urban setting, and memorable soundtracks set a new standard for action films. It showed that a movie could be both entertaining and socially relevant, dealing with issues of race, class, and justice in America. Even today, the movie continues to connect with audiences. Its themes of empowerment, justice, and resilience are timeless. The character of Shaft remains a symbol of strength and independence, inspiring new generations of viewers. The movie's impact on popular culture and its lasting effect ensure that it will be remembered for years to come. In conclusion, Shaft's Big Score is more than just a movie. It's a cultural phenomenon that has left a strong impression on the world of cinema. Its portrayal of a strong black protagonist helped to break down barriers and pave the way for greater diversity in Hollywood. The movie's themes and characters continue to connect with audiences, making it as relevant today as it was over four decades ago. In Shaft's big score, the helicopter featured is a 1969 Bell 206 a Jet Ranger with registration into a 224W. It was later sold to a Canadian company in 1984, but its registration expired in 2012. Around 7300 variations of this model were made between 1962 and 2017. The author of the novel that inspired the original film and co-writer of the screenplay crafted an entirely new script for this installment. It took inspiration from the events following the rescue of Bumpy's daughter from the criminals but took its own direction. The director opted for a 240 to 1 aspect ratio of first for the series. This decision aimed to make the film feel grander, showcasing more of New York City and highlighting key scenes like the boat chase and warehouse finale. So, the movie's creators aim to give it a broader scope compared to its predecessors. It features thrilling sequences like the boat chase and a gripping finale set in a warehouse. Shaft's Big Score from 1972 is the second installment in the Shaft film series. Unlike the original movie with Isaac Hayes' Oscar-winning theme from Shaft, this sequel features a new theme song titled Blow In Your Mind, written by Gordon Parks and performed by O.C. Smith. In contrast, the first film captured the essence of winter during its January 1971 shoot, and this sequel followed suit with a February 1972 filming schedule. Gordon Parks, the director of the film, took on the role of composer, contributing a score distinct from Isaac Hayes' work in the original. Parks drew inspiration from jazz pianist Duke Ellington, evident in several cues, notably the signature chase sequence lasting nearly 20 minutes, concluding the film. The thematic shift in music aligns with the director's vision, creating a notable departure from the original soundtrack. Gordon Parks, with his influence, brings a jazz-infused flavor to the film, emphasizing his connection to the legendary Duke Ellington. This departure is particularly noticeable in the extensive chase sequence, contributing to the film's unique atmosphere. In terms of production, Shaft's big score maintains the winter setting characteristic of the series. The consistency in shooting during winter adds to the gritty urban feel, a trademark of the Shaft films. In summary, Shaft's Big Score stands as the second chapter in the Shaft film series, distinguished by a new theme song, a winter backdrop, and a musical score shaped by Gordon Park's homage to Duke Ellington's jazz legacy, notably in the extended chase sequence. In the movie Shaft's Big Score, John Shaft wields a high standard HS-10B shotgun in the final scenes. 
This firearm, designed around 1970, was originally intended for law enforcement use. Shaft's car, a 1972 Plymouth Satellite Severing Plus, was a limited production model with a total of 21 399 units manufactured. The car's cost was approximately $3,112 equivalent to around $23,50 in 2021. The thrilling chase sequences were filmed at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, a former U.S. Navy installation for ship construction and repair. Most structures seen in the film have been demolished since the yard closed in 1966, undergoing industrial and commercial redevelopment. Shaft's Big Score had a bigger budget than the movie before it, but didn't make as much money at the box office. Gordon Parks, who directed the film, also wrote the music and lyrics for its theme song Blow In Your Mind sung by O.C. Smith. Smith also sang other songs in the movie like Don't Misunderstand and Move On In, which Parks also wrote. In a quick appearance, Parks shows up as a dealer in a gambling scene at Mother Ike's. The movie follows a private detective named John Shaft as he deals with crime and corruption. Even though it had good music and Parks made a cameo, the movie didn't do as well as the one before it. During the production of Shaft's Big Score, writer Ernest Tiedemann achieved an Oscar for adapting The French Connection into a screenplay released the same year as the first Shaft film. Tiedemann also adapted his own novel for the screen alongside screenwriter John D.F. Black. The film received an Italian censorship visa on October 25, 1972. In this movie, Shaft's sidearm changed from a Colt Detective Special to a Smith & Wesson Model 36, nickel-plated with pearl grips. These changes reflect the evolving nature of the character in his environment. Marilyn Hamlin made her debut in Shaft's Big Score, a film directed by Gordon Parks Jr., notably Isaac Hayes, who composed the iconic score for the original Shaft movie, did not return due to a significant fallout with director Gordon Parks Jr. This marked the second installment in the Richard Roundtree Shaft trilogy with a different music composer. The first film featured Isaac Hayes, while Johnny Pate handled the score for Shaft in Africa. Pate also contributed to the music for the subsequent television series in 1974-75. It's worth mentioning that David Arnold scored Shaft 2000, featuring Samuel L. Jackson, and Christopher Leonards took on the scoring duties for Shaft 2019. In summary, Marilyn Hamlin's debut, Isaac Hayes' absence due to a dispute with the director, and the change in music composers for the trilogy are notable aspects of Shaft's big score, contributing to its distinctiveness within the series. In 1972, Shaft's Big Score was the last movie in the Shaft series filmed in New York City. The movie company MGM wanted to make Shaft more like James Bond, so they decided to change locations starting with Shaft in Africa. Even though critics liked the movie, it didn't make enough money. But interestingly, later movies like the 2000 update and the 2019 sequel went back to New York City like the original films. Isaac Hayes, who won an Oscar for the famous theme song, didn't come back to make the music for the sequel. Instead, the director, Gordon Parks, who knew how important the original music was, made the music himself. He used his musical skills to make sure the new soundtrack felt like the old one. Shaft's big score shows a change in where it's set, and in the music, showing how the series has changed. Even though things have changed, the movie still shows how much people like the Shaft series, with later movies going back to New York City like the first ones.